Welcome back to the channel, and we will be reviewing episode 6 of Time Bandits. Mansa Musa. I know I'm still behind. The newest two episodes have already come out yesterday, midday for me at least. I know I still need to get to them. I plan on doing them one tomorrow, one on Saturday. Hopefully I can get to it. We'll see. If not, at the beginning of the next week, I will be all caught up. I hope. Anyway, let's get into this episode. Let's hope it's not horrible. I guess is like the best we can hope for, right? So if you remember from last week, they fell through a portal that seemed very strange. They ended up here on this desert. Not sure where they are yet, but it seems that their friend Judy is missing. Well, here it seems we are Northern Africa 1324. Well, I guess they all forgot about Judy now because they are in the presence of the most richest man on the earth. She didn't evaluate any risks. Mm -hmm. When he gives the signal, Alto, our master of disguise, appears as a camel. So none of their plans seem to be working out. The whole plan, how they will manage to get into the tent with the treasure. None, but none of them seem to succeed in their mission. I guess it's fine. She tried to steal camel dung. Ugh. About as great as this show is. Manza Musa, Musa the first of Mali, was the ruler of the kingdom of Mali from 1312 to 1337. During his reign, Mali was one of the richest kingdoms of Africa and Manza Musa was among the richest individuals in the world. The ancient kingdom of Mali spread across parts of modern-day Mali, Senegal, Gambia, Dunia, Niger, Nigeria, Chad! He was a Chad! <laughs> Mauritia, and Burkina Faso. Manza Musa developed cities like Timbuktu, and Goa into important cultural centers. He also brought architects from the Middle East and across Africa to design the new buildings for his cities. Manza Musa turned the Kingdom of Mali into a sophisticated center of learning in the Islamic world. You would think that uh, you would see some of these Islamic Middle Eastern people in his camp, but I guess since it's Northern Africa, the show believed that they were just all purely black Africans. Right. The time period we are in is 1324, as we read at the beginning of the show of the episode, when Manza Musa went on a pilgrimage to Mecca in 1334, his journey through Egypt caused quite a stir. The Kingdom of Mali was relatively unknown outside of West Africa until this event. Arab writers from the time said that he traveled with an entourage of tens of thousands of people and dozens of camels. Tens of thousands of people and only dozens of camels. Each carrying 130 kilograms, 300 pounds of gold. While in Cairo, Manza Musa met with the Sultan of Egypt and his caravan, spent and gave away so much gold that the overall value of gold de decreased in Egypt for the next 12 years. Stories of his fabulous wealth even reached Europe. The Catalan Atlas, created in th 1375 by Spanish cartographers, shows West Africa dominated by a depiction of Mansa Musa sitting on a throne, holding a nugget of gold in one hand 
and a golden staff in another. After the publication of this atlas, Maza Musa became cemented in the global imagination as a figure of stupendous wealth. So, based on that, I mean, I don't know exactly where we are. Just somewhere in the desert. It's definitely not Egypt, because it would be a little bit more lush. Or at least not in Cairo. Not near any of the cities, not near any of the settlements, so... Maybe we will find out? Monso wants the youth to repeat what he previously said verbatim. No, I promise it wasn't interesting. No, 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 the richest person ever, stuff. Some people say you're even richer than Jeff Bezos from Amazon. Wealthier well, than the mighty mm. Jeff Bezos of the Amazon. Who is that? The master is richer than the mighty Jeff Bezos of the Amazon. <laughs> yeah. ah. What happened to Elon Musk? Oh, wait, right. He's bad and evil now. Forgot. So Kevin introduces himself as Kevin of England, and they all go... <gasps> Because England is known for the Black Death, the plague, and that everyone there is dirty. They do realize that... I don't believe the Black Plague has made it to England quite yet, and that it originated in the Middle East and swept through probably parts of Africa, Northern Africa, and into Europe via Italy and places like that, but what do I know, right? Right, so, I mean, they would probably know more about the plague than the English at this point. <laughs> okay, all right. Now, now, this part is funny. I heard, <laughs> I get this, I heard you boil your beef without spices and eat it. <laughs> uh, yes, I've heard. Look, look, I know the British do have good cuisine, but I have heard this multiple times that they just boil their food and just don't put any spices into it and that it's nasty. And you would think a nation that had the biggest and most amount of spice trade going on, they would be more akin to spices. I mean, there has to be something to it, but it is funny that they did bring it up here in the show. I'm not going to lie, I did like that part. <laughs> First, we have a special guest all the way from Bingley in England. No, no, he's clean, I promise. He wash like us. Yes. It's Kevin. I guess Widget figured out how the map works now, and it was going so well. It was going so well. And then... I hope things work out for Meghan and Harry. Because the, tr the prince traveled for his princess. <sighs> Even to her home nation. I guess he already forgot how the map works. I still have no idea what they are doing, but he's talking about they. He's the the Montemuza follower, whatever, is telling Bidelig that he has this woman who is traveling with him that he just hasn't had the courage to tell how he feels, and Bidelig is the. Saying, well, he has a friend of a friend of a friend who is a friend of a friend of a friend, and, you know. I mean, we all know that Bidelik is into Judy, but who knows where she is now. And apparently he's in love with Manza Musa's wife. Yikes. So this is apparently Cairo. Not very lush at all, is it? I, I kind of have to wonder what um, Egyptians and Islamic people will think of this episode with the... Sultan's men here being kind of gay. Well, he told her. So boring. Who's going to kneel before who? 
before them. Like, who's going to kneel first and who's going to kneel second? That's the kind of discussion we're having. Uh, so he wishes Mansa Musa was his dad. Bitalik doesn't have a thing for Judy. He has a thing for Widget, who just showed up. And at least it's a nice message. You have to go and save your parents if you're on that quest. So, so Kevin set up a heist for Penelope to, you know, get her mojo back and be a thief. And I guess she realized it and was like just happy that she had a friend who would do something like that. Oh, how touching. So apparently they can change things that have already happened in history. And now he's stuck alone. So Judy's captured, I guess. So apart from the obvious horrible Megan and Harry stuff, this episode wasn't actually all that bad. Kind of enjoyed some of the messaging that was going on. That you have to honor your parents. And if you're on a quest to help your parents, you don't do a side quest. If at all possible. Basically. And also, you know, helping friends, you know, even set something up. That's a nice, nice sentiment. Other than that, I, I, I don't know. I guess it was fine. I have no idea how the meeting between Mansa Musa and the Sultan of Egypt went. It'd be interesting to look into that. I think it's definitely worth checking out. Yeah. All right, let me know what you think of the video. If you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't enjoy it, give me a thumbs down, whatever floats your boat. And hey, consider subscribing. Hit the bell for notifications if you do that, because, well, that's the only way that YouTube knows that you are actually interested in seeing these videos. Thank you for stopping by, and until next time, take care.